Hi, I'm Steve Sleeper, the producer of the North Omaha History Podcast. Adam and I have always wanted to record some episodes in front of a live audience, and we got that chance on December 13th, 2021, when we recorded three episodes. The one you're about to hear is the history of Cumming Street in North Omaha. Our thanks to Lamb of God Lutheran Church in Papillion for letting us use their facility, and also thanks to our patrons. They're listed in the show notes. Now, on with the show. Welcome to the North Omaha History Podcast with noted author and historian Adam Fletcher Sassy. Each week, Adam takes you on a guided tour through Omaha's dynamic past. Now seen as the front door to Omaha, Cumming Street has also served as the city's farthest edge as the growing mighty muscles of industry and business and as its dirty, neglected backside. Here's the history of Cumming Street in North Omaha. Take it away, Adam. Ah, oh, Steve, my feet are all wet. There's water up to my calves. The horse is over here grumbling. My stuff is all muddy because I just got off the ferry. The ferry just took me across the Missouri River, and it dumped me right there at California Street. Now, it's called California Street because that's where the 49ers went through 10 years, well, about seven years before I'm here now. It's 1856. I take California Street and just jog over a little bit, and then I'm on Cumming. Now, in 1856, it wasn't called Cumming. Cumming Street was named for a 30-year-old dude. That's right, in Omaha, in in the 1850s, if you wanted a street named after you, you only had to be 30 years old. He was Thomas Cumming. Now, my friend Ryan Rowenfeld, one of Omaha's best historians, taught me about Thomas B. Cummings. Cumming has a nice story. You can look it up, and, and, and it reads very politely. But in reality, he was this rough-and-tough brogue who came in to be the territorial governor of Nebraska in the late 50s. And when he came in, he was just on fire. The guy before him had lasted one day, and he was ready to go. Then he dies young, two years into his term. And uh, the city wanted to recognize him, remember him. So they named this dirt road after him. Now remember that all of Omaha's roads were dirt roads in the 1850s. They all sucked. There were wagon ruts all over them. There was dust flying everywhere. Every window on every storefront was constantly dirty. It was a mess. Cumming Street was one of the messiest because it had the most traffic. You see, Cumming Street started its life as one of the most important roads in Omaha's history. And we don't even talk about it. This road today carries a ton of traffic, and lots of people know what it is and what it does, but they don't know its history. The road wiggle waggles all the way from northwest Omaha, and it wiggles right down, and it used to follow a ridge line, and that ridge line wound around to 33rd and part, well, it wiggled all the way to about 45th Street right around Hamilton, and then followed Hamilton to 33rd, and then waggled up to Parker 33rd and Parker, right at the intersection of Prospect Hill Cemetery. And then it dove down from 33rd and Parker down to Cumming Street. And it was laid out, this road was laid out in 1851 by the United States Army. And the road is called Military Road. That's right, Military Road had a name. And it was originally Cumming Street. Cumming Street became, or it was was laid on top of the Military Road. So, this is the 1850s. By the 1860s, coming and died, they'd renamed the street for him, and it was filling up with business real fast. And the businesses were crazy. I mean, think about this. These were settlers. These were the times of wagons and horses and mules and families being shoved into things and being dragged 1,000 to 2,000 miles out to Omaha, and they were heading to Oregon. They were heading to Washington. They were not really going to California. It wasn't really a thing except for those crazy glutes who went out there to find the gold. But they went. And they went again and again and again. There were so many of them that they called Omaha the gateway to the west. But along Cumming Street, there were all the services for these folks. There were hotels. Some were nice. A lot were kind of shady, we'll call them. There were restaurants. Sunside Cafe and all of these kind of names all up and down the way. And this guy was a proprietor and that guy was a proprietor and that guy was a proprietor. And they had wagon wheels for sale and they had this and they had that and they had the other thing. It wasn't quite as popular as downtown Omaha, but remember, the big fancy warehouses that ended up going in, they didn't start getting built until the 1880s. So in the 1860s, coming was the jam. 
and it had the most traffic and had the most people. Well, Cumming kept that look for a very long time, all the way into the 1950s and even the early 60s. And that whole time the street changed over and over and over and over. One of the most romantic stories about Cumming, and there aren't a lot of them, but one of the most romantic ones was that an early businessman, his last name was Mercer, he was a doctor. He had a lot of investments in West Omaha, way in West Omaha, right around 34th Street, all the way up to 40th. I mean, that guy was way out west. He built a beautiful development, and he filled it with neat big brick houses, and he needed a streetcar to encourage people to get up there. So he ran the lines right up Cumming Street. Now, streetcars, right? Streetcars, ding, ding, beautiful. What a lovely image. Yeah, the first ones in Omaha were pulled by big old horses. And those horses were scary. They're called Percheron horses. And they were 10 hands high. They were bigger than any man. Huge horses. And they pulled these wagons. And the wagons would hold 10 or 15 human beings inside of them. And they looked like goofy wagons. They looked like, if you could imagine, like a circus wagon. That's what the original streetcars in Omaha looked like, the horse-drawn streetcars. They weren't on tracks either. And they were going through that mud and dirt. And that's what coming was covered with. So, old man Mercer said, we need to do better than that. And he put down the first bricks on a street in Omaha upcoming in the 1880s. Now, there's 20, 30 years in between the city starting and when that rolled out. So you can imagine it was a big mess. There were some cool businesses along there, though. Um, one of the businesses that I like to talk about was called Madam Smith's Palm Reading. And I found advertisements for it from the 1870s through the 1890s. So this lady was at it for a very long time reading some wicked palms. I've got a photo of her shop there on NorthOmahHistory.com. So if anybody's interested in that, you just look up History of Coming Street. And uh, you'll, you can see a photo of the, of the storefront where it was at, but it had a neat cupola on the top and an onion-shaped dome. and old, It looked mysterious. I can't find details about her, but that's another story for a different day, I guess. But in the meantime, Coming Street kept growing and changing. Uh, you know, I, I, would, I guess I'd be remiss if I left out this little tiny detail. Cumming Street wasn't originally called Military Road. That was just kind of a informal, everybody knew, that, knew what it was. It was originally called Badger Street. Badger Street, went, yeah, that's my badger sound. How do you like that? Badger Street was next to Antelope Street. Antelope Street was next to Elk Street. Elk Street was next to... And all those streets became the streets that we know and love today. Nicholas, Paul and on and on, going north. One of the most important streets that went off of Badger Street was called the Florence Winter Quarters Road. And the Florence Winter Quarters Road went, boop, straight north. And it was another dirt path that headed out to some weird old town that's up there where other people went through called Winter Quarters and later on Florence. And today that road is called the Florence Boulevard. They didn't just make up Florence Boulevard when they graded in 1892. They actually just followed the old dirt road that went that way. But that stemmed off of Badger Street. It started right there, and it's still there right now. So, you know, there were some interesting things about the Mormons who went uh, north and south along that road to do business in Omaha and then to go back up to Florence and whatnot. But if you can really envision that, you know, we've got that kind of pioneer setting down. For that period between the 1850s and the 1880s, though, um, not only did we have, you know, the, the Madam's Palm Reading Store, and not only did we have these different hotels and restaurants and places to get your wagon fixed and whatnot, but we also had visionaries starting to come along. And these visionaries saw the street, and they decided that, you know what, we can do more here. So one of the very first things that happened on Cumming Street, and it's hard to picture it today, but in the section that we know from about 10th Street all the way over to 30th, was a gigantic residential district. And this residential district had two humongous schools starting in the 1870s. It had dozens of houses, single family, multifamily. There were St. Louis style flats. There were uh, even the early apartment buildings inside this little region from about Capitol Street to Cumming Street from 10th Street all the way to 24th. Also in the 1870s, something happened on this end, on the east side of that block of that region. Well, before that even, the military started putting their horses down there on the flats. And back in the olden days, right about 10th Street, there were little cliffs that dropped off from downtown. You can't see any sign of these cliffs today except 
for where Conagra used to be. There's a little sloping hill on uh, Douglas right there, and it slopes down. This used to be a cliff all along downtown, and it's all been graded out now. But one of the graders who took it out was the U.S. Army, who had their original Omaha barracks down on 7th and coming, and 6th and coming in that little region. That was in the 1850s and 60s. They ended up moving it north to 30th and Fort, and it became Fort Omaha. But originally, it was way down there. Now, when the military left, they had a good little chunk of land right there, and it seemed pretty well located. Let's just drop some railroad shops here. Now, if we build these railroad shops, we can convince Lincoln that this is a good place to go. President Abraham Lincoln, 1860s, early 60s. Hey, Lincoln, where are you going to put the railroad? He said, we're going to, we're going to start in Council Bluffs, and we're going to run it all the way out west, and we'll unite the country with it. Somehow, the Omaha Founding Fathers were able to convince President Lincoln, actually, don't build the shops over there in Council Bluffs. Build them in Omaha. And they did it. They built them at 7th and Cumming. And the Union Pacific shops were born right there on Cumming Street in the 1870s. The very beginning of the railroad in the western United States. So, a couple other big places went in down there. Eventually, with time, I'll mention those as we go along. But when that neighborhood, when those neighborhoods started popping up, a couple of unique things happened that, that were in other parts of Omaha, but it really formed. One thing that happened is that African Americans in Omaha started to collect into one area around 1870. Before that, they were kind of spread out, but we're talking about 100 people. When the city had a couple thousand people, the seven or 8,000. But African Americans started to gather into one place. Jewish congregations started gathering into single places along Capitol, along 10th Street, and different regions like this. And those two communities of folks ended up growing and changing uh, together for a period of time. And this area where they lived was called down on Dodge Street to coming from about 7th over to about 16th, 15th, right in there, in the 1860s and 70s, was called the Near North Side. Not what we think of from the 1960s, because by 100 years later, that had expanded greatly, and coming was the south end of it. But in that immediate period, oh yeah, there were other places too. Little Stockholm was down off of Cumming Street. Little Italy, the original Little Italy in Omaha. Oh yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's right. 10th Street had, dominates the name today. It's very well branded as being Little Italy. But North Omaha had its own Little Italy made of Northern Italians who all lived around the region of 17th and coming. So little Stockholm, little Sweden, little Italy. There were a couple different ethnic communities, African-American, Jewish people, and they were vibrant and they were thick and they were just booming, but they were not rich. Let's be very clear about this. We're talking about dirty houses, and, and I don't mean dirty on the inside. I don't know anything about the inside, but you look at the photos and they were covered in soot because there was another company that was working right down there called the American Smelting and Refinery Company. And the American Smelting and Refinery Company was taking an ore from Colorado that was being run down the river. They'd take it off the barges. They'd take it out of the wagons that came across, and they'd refine it right there. American Smelting and Refining Company became known as a Sarco. And a Sarco had a huge plant just off of coming, but further on down at the riverside. So Asarco was located right there. Union Pacific was located right there. You can imagine all the soot, all the smoke, all the smell. And the workers who were coming in, the immigrants who were coming in, needed cheap, quick places to live, so they would live right there. The Cass School, C-A-S-S, -S, after the street, was located at about 17th and Cass. It was packed with immigrants. They had English language classes. They had assimilation classes that they were opening to everybody who came through the doors all the way through the 1910s and 20s. Right there at Cumming Street, right there in that region. Oh, then, the, of course, the churches. So many churches. Scandinavian churches. Um, Catholic churches. Lutheran churches. Danish churches. There were synagogues. So many synagogues. There were so many Jewish businesses. So many immigrant businesses. So many American, quote, unquote, right? Uh, and eventually, I mean, this, the neighborhood was thick. I just can't tell you how thick it actually was. But right there with the cast school... At about 17th, we had another public school that was right down the road at about 17th and Izzard that was called the North Omaha School because that was North Omaha for a period of time. Now, they had to change the name when North Omaha expanded. So by the 18, it was built in the 1870s. By the 1880s, 
they were calling it the the Izzard Street School. And then there was a third school right in the neighborhood that was down at Third and Dodge before the 1870s. It was called the Dodge School. And the Dodge School lasted all the way through the 1890s when they converted, oh, by the way, the first African-American teacher in Omaha taught at Dodge Street School. Anyhow, they converted that school into a police station. Hmm, how does that work? Anyway, it was the Omaha Public Police Station for a little while, uh, jails and all, and that's the school where they dug underneath and found the graves. There were a series of graves that were found down there. Nobody knew what they were from. Some people assumed that they were Native American. Other people conjectured that they were the bad guys. They never really figured it out. That was in the 1890s when they ended up, late 1890s, they tore it down. So you have three different schools. You have dozens of churches. You have a couple of synagogues. You have a whole booming community of residents, real human beings, living in houses and having their lives. Let's zoom way forward. Along the way, movie theaters come in. The Hippodrome movie theater, the Lincoln movie theater, both were located on coming. One of the most popular uh, African-American owned businesses in Omaha's history moved into a building on Cumming Street right at 17th. It was called the Keffer Laboratories, and it was run to make products to serve African-American people. Um, it was very popular for about four or five years and then fell out of favor nationally. Something happened with their products. I can't quite find the bow for that story, but when I do, I'm going to write about it. But in the meantime, just know that it was there. Oh, by the way, there was a population of African Americans, specifically along Cumming Street. The George, uh, the George Washington Carver Hotel was located on Cumming Street, named in honor of the African American inventor, to signal to African Americans, this is a safe place for you to stay. Because the rest of Omaha's uh, hotels were hostile towards it. black people staying in them. So Cumming Street had that population as well. So many different things. You kind of get a sense. Just to paint out the idea of Little Stockholm a bit, there was a guy named John Bloom who opened up a headstone company right at 17th and Cumming. Today you can see his building still standing. It's home to a nice little store and a beautiful mural on the side. But that building and that business went for a long, long time. But again, everything eventually changed. By the 1930s, the neighborhood was transitioning and becoming more industrialized. The houses were starting to get knocked down in the 30s. The city of Omaha instituted its first ever ghetto rehabilitation plan focused on the area just south of an old rail railroad depot that was right there at uh, 12th and coming. So anyway, the long story short is that all that transition began to happen and gave permission in the 1950s for a radical change to come. Think about that radical change, and your mind will take you to, now, wait a second, what happened to Cumming Street in the 1950s? Well, the city of Omaha thought it would be best if they put in a big, nice highway. A big, nice highway for everybody to leave downtown Omaha and go to the new neighborhoods that were being built in the northwest part of the city, out by that fancy Benson, out by that beyond Benson, out past 72nd Street, because after the war, after World War II, white flight was in full effect. People needed a fast way to get out to West Omaha, so they took part of Cumming Street starting at 30th, and they turned it into the Radial Highway, and the Radial Highway was a grand invention. I'm not even going to talk about it, but you know what I am going to talk about right there at the corner of 30th and Cumming? Tech High. The finest high school west of the Mississippi River for more than a decade. It was the largest, it was the most uh, up-to-date, technologically advanced, and uh, had the best reputation of any school, not in Omaha, not in Nebraska, but they claimed for the whole Midwest. There were postcards of how beautiful that building was when it was finished. It was even designed to be bigger still. By the way, Steve, I have an article called A History of Tech High School there on NorthOmahaHistory.com. So if you want to learn more, go and check that out. But in the meantime, Cumming Street was the pipeline right to that school. Now, just a quick side note about that school. It was built on the site of a dump. There was a dump right on the corner, on the um, southwest corner of 30th and Coming. Long forgotten. Don't worry about it. They took it out when they put the school in. But there was a dump there because there was a creek there. And what people used to do in the old, old days, you just throw your trash down by the creek because it would get washed away eventually. And they really didn't care about the creeks at all anywhere in the old city. And the creek that flowed right there was one of those creeks that they just didn't care about. Oh, and by the way, they did take all the trash out, but they left the creek. And apparently, underneath... The TAC today, the Teachers Administrative Center, owned by the Omaha Public Schools, 
there's a creek flowing under the building. And apparently you can get down there and see it. I haven't. I don't know anybody who actually has seen it with their own eyes. But if there's any real estate people in the crowd, make sure that you go and look underneath tack and then send me a picture of that creek because I want to see it. We won't even go into the swimming pool that's down there. We won't talk about the hundreds and thousands of students that graduated from Tech. The grand legacy of that high school. Humongous, so many sports stars. But also a Nobel Prize winner. Also several politicians. All came through Tech High School. Which was, dare I say, mercilessly shut down by Omaha Public Schools in 1984. uh, Because it just didn't suit the the district's needs anymore. But today... 1984 to 2021, that's several years. There are more than 2,000 students in that building every single day. There is part of four different schools that have been placed inside of the Teachers Administration Center. It sounds like we still need the school to be a school, but let's just, let's not even go there. Okay, so other sites along the way. We all know about Roberts Dairy. The reason why Roberts Dairy was located right there on Cumming Street is because originally... There was a dairy at Cumming and 30th, a literal cows in the field dairy, and Roberts bought it, and they just made it into what it is now. Uh, before the radio, radio highway went in and before TAC existed, there was a football field on the corner, a giant football field for the high school. Uh, so lots of different things have come and gone, um, and so many different businesses and so many different, I mean, just iterations of Cumming Street itself. Let's zoom up the hill. The other thing that went in along with Dr. Mercer's neighborhood was another neighborhood built by a man named George Bemis. George Bemis was the secretary of a notorious uh, railroad man. We'll call him notorious. He's pretty notorious. His last name was Train. Ridiculous dude who owned the most land of any Omaha for more than several decades. But one of his guys, his secretary, his main guy, George Bemis, he bought his own subdivision. He plotted it out. He put in some streets and boulevards, uh, and Bemis Park was born. Bemis Park was born. Bemis Park had its own lagoon. It had a beautiful walk through the, through the wild, and people loved it for a long time. The houses that are still there are gorgeous, and so many of them are notable and very, very important even. The Zabriskie House is one of the most renowned Queen Anne-style architecture homes in the entire United States of America because of its fidelity to its original style as well as its maintenance and ongoing upkeep, and it's just neat. Uh, There are other houses that have really neat stories in the Bemis Park neighborhood. But another neat feature of that neighborhood that's off of coming but still worth mentioning was the Walnut Hill Reservoir. Omaha had dirty water for a long time. Made people really, really sick. They pulled it in right down off the river. Uh, coming, st- I'm sorry, at California Street, they had a, a water treatment plant, treatment, which is really just where they had the greasy bumps, and they sucked the water out of the river, and they ran it into people's houses, mostly untreated. Eventually that changed, but one of the ways that it changed was with the Walnut Hill Reservoir, where they started piping water down from Florence, and the Florence Water Works, and it's all connected right off of coming. So you have all this history starting to merge together when this one street that did all of these things. Businesses, industry, houses, you had so many different populations, so many different folks doing this stuff. What happened to Cumming Street? That's the question that I had to ask myself. Because now when I drive from Abbott Drive all the way out to Radial Highway, all the way out to Saddle Creek, it doesn't look like much. It's a sad story in some places. Some of the buildings just look forgotten. Some of the buildings look asleep. Other buildings look alive, but it's so few that they really pop out for looking that good. Some of it's getting redeveloped down by Ameritrade Park, but most of it's just sitting like it has for the last 50, 60 years. So what happened? When they put in Radial Highway, the whole tone of the neighborhood started to change. That high-speed traffic, it was designed to get people out not bring people in. And there was no easy way to stop and shop. There was no easy place to get out of your car and go to your house. You had to get off on these little exits. You had to take an awkward turn. It was always a thing. And the neighborhood started to decline. At the same time, white flight took hold. And folks, middle class white folks, were moving out of that region and into West Omaha. In the same time, the houses that they had lived in got cut up into apartments. The Bemis Park neighborhood was an apartment neighborhood when you moved to Omaha, Steve, in the 70s. And it stayed that way for a long time until the neighborhood movement 
restored Bemis Park's fidelity to its history. Hard work by a lot of people brought the formation of Omaha's first historic district called the Bemis Park Historical Landmark District. It's different from a National Register district, but it's still the same idea. And the beautiful homes that are there are there on purpose. And they were reformed as single resident, single family homes. And there's still a few apartments that are mixed in, but for the most part, the neighborhood maintains that kind of identity. And it's kind of a hint to where the rest of Cumming Street could go. But in reality, it's never going to be the same again. Everything's changed. With the new hotels that are down by the ballpark, with the businesses that are kind of, they're fiending to get off of Cumming Street and onto Nicholas and into that region there. There's actually a National Register of Historic Places, Historic District, around Nicholas Street now, between Cumming and Nicholas, that's waiting to be developed up and really turned into what it could be. Because there are old warehouses down there behind the hotels. There are old spaces, and they want to kind of maximize the use of that. So that's coming. C-O-M-I. NG, not C-U-M. But coming itself has so many different sites, and I'm not going to list them all right now, Steve, but I think the important thing for people to know is that, you know, places like the Tip Top Apartments, that began as a Ford truck factory at 16th and coming, and the building's still there waiting for you to see it. Uh, there's a business in Omaha that's actually called the Badger Body uh, Shop. They build truck boxes to go on the back of trucks. What was Badger Body named after? Even the company doesn't know that the original street that Badger Body opened up when they worked on wagons was called Badger Street. I shared it with them. They kind of laughed. So you get the point that there's all of this history that's buried in there and, and just so many different things to see. If folks are really interested, I really encourage you to... You know, take a look at the website, look up the article. You can see pictures of the old way that Holy Family Catholic Church looked when it served Irish congregation in the 1880s, Italians in the 1900s, African Americans in the 1950s on, including David Rice. Different story for another day. And so many other sites that go north from Cumming Street that are all around Cumming Street. Creighton University has, has changed the tenor and tone of the neighborhood tremendously. And they are building buildings in the style of what could have been there at one point. They weren't actually, but they could have been. But there is one flag that I'll give you, the last thing that I'll tell you about Cumming Street today. Right off of Cumming. Right on, on Florence Boulevard. Just south of Cumming. There's a building tucked away right there. It was built in 1881. It's in this Richard, Richardson Romanesque style. Smooth, beautiful bricks on the outside, lined with rough hue and sandstone. Red bricks, rough hue and sandstone in that kind of tan. It's around the window tops. It's got bands around it, two stories. At one time, this building was just, it was multifamily housing, uh, built in row, row house style. Today, it's called the Campion House, C-A-M-P-I-O-N, and it sits tucked away on Creighton's campus. They don't flag it. They don't name it. There is a placard right there to recognize the Native American tribes that were in that area uh, long, long ago. But the building itself is the template that Creighton is designing its new buildings from. So when you see those beautiful new red brick buildings that are going in, they're copying off of that old one right off of Cumming Street. And that's the richness of Cumming Street. And that is a little bit about the history of the street, Steve. Thanks for listening to the North Omaha History Podcast with noted author and historian Adam Fletcher Sassy. Join us next week as Adam takes you on another guided tour through Omaha's dynamic past.